Vigan, a remote coastal town in the north of the Philippines, which still exudes the flair of its Spanish colonial heritage. The ancestors of the present-day inhabitants came from Malaysia. From AD 600, merchants from nearby China began to migrate here. Then, in the 16th century, the Spanish arrived with colonization plans that had proved effective in Mexico. That's why, in Vigan Cemetery, the descendants of the original Malay inhabitants lie at rest next to Spaniards, and Chinese families who were baptized and converted to Christianity. Vigan owes its emergence as a unique cultural melting pot to its ideal coastal location and a maritime trade network linking it with Malaysia, China, Europe and Mexico. Vigan is located in the west of the island of Luzon, about 400 kilometers north of Manila. Today, it is a capital of the province of Ilocos Sur, the town centre is modern, restlessly loud and plagued by smog. More striking than the architectural reminders of the Spanish colonial era is Spain's religious legacy. Semana Santa, Holy Week. Semana Santa is a colourful festival with a fun fair, church services and processions. Vigan is a pious town, something that is particularly noticeable at Easter. The Baroque Cathedral is fairly full every Sunday throughout the year, but on Good Friday, it is bursting at the seams. The highlight of the festivities is the procession of the carrozas, for centuries now, owning these floats and decorating them with life-size statues of the saints has been a privilege of the most influential families in Vigan. It's only at Easter that the carrozas, with their patron saints, are brought out, consecrated in the cathedral and pushed through town in a procession that is followed by 5,000 people. Today, over 90% of Filipinos are Catholics, and that was already the case 300 years ago. In 1572, eight Spanish vessels landed on the coast of Vigan. On board was Juan de Salcido, a conquistador who has gone down in history as the Cortes of the Philippines. He was accompanied by soldiers and priests. Their aim was to repeat the conquest of Latin America on the Philippines. Like the Chinese before them, the Spaniards recognized Vigan's ideal location between the sea and the river delta. It was the Spanish who developed Vigan into a town, one based on models that had been tried and tested in Mexico. For example, there is a large square in the town center. Next to it is a cathedral with three naves and a bell tower standing on its own. In Europe at the time, architects were striving to build taller and taller churches, edifices that soared heavenwards. But in the Philippines, churches were built close to the ground in a solid squat form known as earthquake baroque. It was the Spaniards who introduced the technique of building with natural stone. They erected ecclesiastical bulwarks that have survived conflagrations and earthquakes. The early architects were simple monks who modeled their churches on those built in Spain and Mexico. Every year, each adult male had to put in 15 days work hauling stones. Built in 1793, the Archbishop's Palace is the religious and political administration center for the whole province. A dignified building for the bishops, especially as the surrounding area was characterized almost entirely by simple wooden structures. Vigan was the oldest town in the north of the Philippines and the Bishop's Palace the most important bastion for expanding and consolidating Spanish rule. In a letter to King Philip II, written in 1605, the bishop wrote, Each priest is worth a hundred soldiers. The Philippines, by the way, are named after King Philip.
church statistics indicate that there were no more than 600 priests in the Philippines. Every year they had to submit a report on the success of their missionary work, but it took more than 12 months for their reports to reach Madrid. The priests complained about the lack of additional priests being sent out to Asia, about the unbearable climate and about rebellious Indios who refused to pay tributes. In addition to their missionary work, the Spanish also had commercial interests, and Vigan seemed a profitable place. In those days, the Mestizo River provided access to the sea and linked the town to the hinterland. The river has since silted up, and there is no longer any indication that until well into the 19th century, Vigan was a kind of Hanseatic city in the Philippines, a town that enjoyed privileges granted by the Spanish crown. Business was in the hands of the Chinese, who came here as merchants and soon intermarried with the local population. Their descendants, known as mestizos, were middle-class traders who soon developed into a social elite. What looks like a marshy pond full of water lilies was once the city's hub, its port. All that remains of the quay wall are some rotting steps, but at one time proud virets were moored here, three and four masted sailing boats laden with Chinese porcelain, ivory, silk clothing and beeswax. Along with Manila, Vigan was a transshipment centre on the so-called Acapulco route across the Pacific to Mexico and it was through this that the coastal town became prosperous. Vigan is on UNESCO's World Cultural Heritage List. Around 130 colonial buildings have been preserved here, built by wealthy mestizos. They're elegant homes adapted to the tropical climate with large windows and sliding wooden shutters that provide protection from the sun. Solid stone walls were designed to defy the numerous earthquakes. In 1739, large parts of the historic Old Town were destroyed by fire. After that, in the Mestizo district, bricks were used for the ground floor. But the poorer people in other parts of town still had to live in houses made of timber. The remote town of Vigan is the only place in the Philippines whose architectural heritage from the Spanish colonial era has been preserved. But the buildings also reveal stylistic elements from China and Mexico. Like their owners, they are multicultural. In those days, the master and mistress of the house lived on the upper floor. Many merchants had become rich through trading in indigo and tobacco, and also in cotton fabrics, which even competed with those traded in Cadiz in Spain. The ground floor was used for storing commercial goods or agricultural products. The doors were wide enough to permit a calesa, a one-horse carriage, to be driven right into the building to unload goods. The handful of small workshops on the road itself still manufacture the typical vegan windows, but only to order, and each window is made to measure. Mr. Parr, who is a master craftsman, has two apprentices who fit the glass substitute into pre-prepared wooden frames. Since the panes break easily, Mr. Parr does the job of cutting to size himself.
The natural material is known as kapis and comes from the neighboring island of Cebu. No one knows for sure whether the practical shell panes are a Chinese and Japanese invention or whether they're typically Filipino. At any rate, according to Mr. Pa, they provide good protection from the tropical sun. Although they let light through, they make it soft and diffuse. Vigan's heyday faded long ago. The tropical climate, with more than 10 typhoons a year, is eating away at the colonial buildings, and often there is a shortage of funds for restoration work. Vigan lost its importance as a trading center. Politically, difficult times and economic depression followed, but since Vigan was added to the World Cultural Heritage List, the price of the villas, which often stand empty, has risen. More and more Filipino tourists are coming to this remote town in the north of the Philippines in search of their past. Mm -hmm.